India is reeling under a pandemic and now we have another infection to worry about. The black fungus cases and the deaths because of the infection are going up across the country. And here is how the governments are combating this latest health crisis. Take a look. The black fungus menace is spreading rapidly across India. Cases are rising, deaths too in some states due to this fungal infection. The centre has taken note with Prime Minister Modi now saying we need to be as cautious as possible. Our fight in black fungus जरूरी सावधानी और व्यवस्था पर ध्यान देना जरूरी है। Cases are going up in states like Maharashtra, Delhi, as well as Uttar Pradesh. परसों तक 197 cases दिल्ली में admitted थे सभी अस्पतालों में मिलाकर। और 197 में दिल्ली के patient भी थे और दिल्ली से बाहर के patient भी थे। इसकी जो दवाई है उस दवाई के लिए केंद्र सरकार ने उसको control किया है। केंद्र सरकार सबको कोटे के हिसाब से दे रही है। दिल्ली को अभी उन्होंने 2000 के लिए कहा है देने के लिए जैसे जिस मिलेगी हम अस्पतालों को दे रहे हैं। The health ministry has written to states asking them to declare black fungus as an epidemic, prompting five states to go ahead and take the step. हमने राजस्थान मामारी अधिनियम 2020 की धारा तीन और सपटी धारा चार की उपधारा के अंतर्गत black fungus को भी संपूर्ण राजस्थान में मामारी तथा notifiable डिजीज घोषित किया है इसकी जो दवा है एमपी एम्पोथेरेसिन उसको भी अपने अंडर में ले लिया अधिकृत कर लिया है अभी तक ब्लैक फंगस के 226 मामले सामने आए हैं हमने इसके लिए सभी मेडिकल कॉलेजेस में 20-20 बेड के वार्ड रिजर्व किए हैं What's concerning, however, is the shortage of the antifungal drug amphotericin B, which is used to treat black fungus. The Delhi High Court has also asked the centre to import this antifungal drug. Today, black fungus is a lot of research and its cases are also coming to the country. The production of its drug production and its availability is also to ramp up the Department of Pharmaceuticals Drug controller, unki taraf se bhi vishesh prayas ho rahe hai. There's also a focus on spreading awareness, on prevention of the fungal infection and symptoms to watch out for. So my plea to everyone would be, if you have COVID-19 and you are diabetic, please make sure your sugars are properly checked and your sugars are under good control. If you need steroids, make sure they are taken in the right dose and only when they are indicated, do not misuse steroids when they are not required. As black fungus cases rise across India, and that too amid a pandemic, the centre and states are working on a war footing to control this infection. Bureau Report, India Today. Steroids misuse, the reason for black fungus outbreak in India? Yes, but it is only a part of the many reasons. Here's a news report. A rare fungal infection called mucomycosis of black fungus has suddenly surged in India in patients suffering or recovering from COVID-19. That is rare, but it can kill as well. Mucomycosis of black fungus is caused by a mold called mucormycetes. It is everywhere, say experts. It lives in soil, plants or decaying organic matter, in spoiled breads of fruits and mostly in drip pans of air conditioners. The infection is rare, but recently there has been a surge. Experts are now saying that steroids are being blamed, but they are only a part of the problem. The unhygienic and dirty way of delivering oxygen to patients in many places in India is the main reason. The cylinders in which the liquid oxygen is stored, transported and used are rigorously cleaned and disinfected. This did not happen when cases soared and demand for oxygen increased and industry oxygen was given instead of medical oxygen. Humidification using dirty water is also a reason. We are using non-rebreathing mask and lots of people in this second wave being treated at home. So they are using non-rebreathing mask 
but they are not doing sterile uh, they are not using sterile conditions and the third cause might be that uh, humidifier uh, that air the water which is used in those humidifiers they are used uh, from the tap water in spite of the tap water we can use uh, this sterile water that is uh, uh, that can reduce the uh, number of cases which we are seeing in the mucormycosis or the black fungus Prolonged use of steroids is just one reason and disproportionate blame is what experts are warning us against. In COVID, it's affecting mostly poorly controlled diabetics who've had high doses of steroids for longer than 7 to 10 days. The other factors causing it are poor orodental hygiene, long and sometimes unnecessary courses of antibiotics and prolonged oxygen therapy especially in unhygienic conditions. That means dirty masks, tubes, water sources and uncertified oxygen cylinders. Medical experts say that the real solution now is to ensure hygienic and the right way of producing, supplying, distributing and using medical oxygen. We certainly have to look at the way we are using the steroids given the fact that misuse is obviously leading to cases of black fungus. But also we need to be extremely cautious about the use of antifungal medications as well because they can be extremely toxic. In New Delhi, Sneha Mordani for India Today. Amidst the rising case of black fungus infection in several states of India, four cases of white fungus infection have been reported from Patna and Bihar. So what is white fungus and what should be done to keep it at bay? Sneha Mortani with this report. Four cases of white fungus have slowly crept up in Patna and Bihar. Doctors explain why white fungus is as infectious as black fungus and also dangerous. It affects lungs as well as other parts of the body, including nails, skin, stomach, kidney, brain, private parts and mouth. Doctors say white fungus is normal fungus and it has existed before COVID-19. What is frightening about this fungus is that if you do not treat it aggressively, it is a, has a 90% mortality. It occurs basically in moist condition and especially in diabetic patients. The worrying bit is that white fungus can infect the lungs. It can spread through the bloodstream to various different organs. It can even affect lungs in the critically ill patient, especially those that are in the ICU and on ventilator. It is seen that this infection can cause real deadly fatal infection. There also has been a confirmed case of white fungus in UP, which is being treated by a doctor from Varanasi. Post COVID uh, steroid management, ke baad aisa presentation aaya hai, aankhu ki roshni kam hone ke jaisa. Aur, lekin ye koi nayi bimari nahi hai, kyunki jin logo ki immunity bahut zada kam hoti hai, unme aisi condition paayi ja sakti hai. Ye ek tarah ka opportunistic infection hai, agar scientific bhasha mein bola jaye to. Not much evidence has been found of the white fungus spreading to other states, but experts feel that it can be very virulent. The mortality rate of white fungus is currently unknown. Medical experts believe an HRCT scan may be required to trace this fungal infection. In New Delhi, Sneha Mordani for India Today. Tamil Nadu has emerged as a new epicenter of coronavirus in South India with cases and deaths rising with each passing day. Here's our report on what's happening in the state of Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is India's new COVID epicenter, reporting maximum daily cases. 14.89% rise in daily cases has been seen in the last one week. The state, on an average, has witnessed over 354 deaths in the last one week. The medical infrastructure is in doldrums. On the 20th of May, 72% of ICU beds and oxygen beds had been occupied. The Tamil Nadu COVID war room is facing a crisis. We do a surge capacity planning. Every collector is on a surge capacity plan and collectors are really planning for the, because we are two weeks behind many other states. So our planning is based on our projections and the projections, uh, like we try to estimate the number of beds required and we try to add it incrementally. The government has instructed private medical colleges to set aside 
50% of their bed capacity for COVID-19. However, setting up additional ICUs for the growing demand is a major challenge. The repeated calls are more. Like people want to know what is the update in every 15 minutes or 30 minutes. We, we understand their uh, grievances and we are responding for it. And wo wo the volume of call is getting filtered to 2000. And again, if you go back who are once the ICU, it is almost only 500. Availability of oxygen is also a concern. Tamil Nadu's daily demand is over 500 metric tons. We have our own production, but it's really hand to mouth. Government of India has actually allowed us uh, under the auction plus 519 metric tons. Similarly, we are looking at auction audit, the utilization of auction by the hospitals, and wherever and you know, on a daily basis, uh, uh, again the United uh, this Unified Command Center collects the data, gives us. The second wave has seen an increase in the number of healthcare professionals getting infected. 89 doctors have lost their lives to the pandemic till date. Vaccination is also among the lowest in the country. Images of misery that were seen during the height of second wave in other parts of the country are now being seen in Tamil Nadu. Long queues outside crematoriums reported from Coimbatore district. Every day we have been visiting crematoriums and ensuring that uh, uh, there is no wait time. In this regard, two things we have done. One, we, have, we are almost fi uh, finishing the CCTV camera installation in all the, uh, the, all the crematoriums and burial grounds. Have a direct watch at us. Secondly, we are also going to make online availability in, of crematoriums. At this juncture, we are seeing that the opposition parties are alleging that improper lockdown which has been implemented in the state is one of the reasons why the number of COVID-19 cases are still rising. The opposition party has demanded that stringent measures be put into place to ensure that there's a cap on the increase in number of cases. Well, we're seeing that the state government has been working hard to increase the number of beds and to increase oxygen availability. But what will it do to ensure that the COVID-19 numbers are brought down? That is a big question. With camera person Daniel from Chennai, this is Akshay Nath for India Today. <clears throat> Hit hard by the second COVID wave, Mysuru has now kick-started a telecare facility where volunteers attend to the calls from anxious individuals who have just tested positive. Two helpline numbers have been issued to provide medical advice to the people. Here's more. The second wave of COVID has not spared Mysuru. The heritage city which is seeing the second most number of cases in Karnataka, has now kick-started a tele-care facility with a difference for the rising number of COVID patients. These volunteers attend to the calls from anxious individuals who have just tested positive. Two helpline numbers have been issued to provide medical advice to people. We have started this tele-care initiative so that anybody who wants, you know, medical advice can instantly call us. There is no waiting time, nothing. Any time they want from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., the center is always operational, they can call us. And uh, the USP of this initiative is that Mysore City Corporation has teamed up with civil society organizations and all the doctors, you know, who are part of this initiative are voluntarily contributing their time. So there are 40 doctors who are Mysore-based and 40 doctors who are UK-based. So how exactly does this center function? So what we do is first pick up the call, assign him to a doctor. The doctor then directly calls the patient okay. and uh, takes the feedback. What? The calls the yeah, the doctor calls the patient, yes. Okay. So he takes the feedback, what, what is happening with the patient. And then he suggests either home isolation or hospitalization. After getting complete details of the people under home isolation, the corporation also sends them medical kits. Many of the volunteers are those who themselves survived the virus. Now they are helping others to overcome the trauma of the disease. Initially they'll ask like, uh, I got positive uh, today, I got tested positive, what to do? So I'll ask them what are the symptoms you have. Uh, slowly, slowly I'm talking to them and giving them confidence. Then I'll tell them we have a wonderful doctors with us. Uh, so we'll try to connect you. You can tell your problem and they'll suggest you better uh, and also give them confidence to not to get uh, scared of this virus. 
So if you get a report that says you're positive or are suffering from symptoms, all you've got to do is call the COVID telecare, give them your details, and a doctor will call you back. It's as simple as that. Please do not panic. With video journalist Madhuwar, Nolan Pinto for India Today in Mysuru. While patients in Bihar run around for beds, a hospital building in Punya has been turned into a cow shed and instead of doctors, cows are doing the rounds of the hospital. Take a look at this report by my colleague Rohit Singh. Take a long, hard look at this structure. From all angles, this one visual tells you what has gone wrong in Bihar. What you are seeing on your screens is a hospital building in Purnia district. What was planned to be a modern health center now hosts cows. All around you will find fodder and cow dung. अस्पतालों की असली हकीकत बिहार में जहां 6 साल से एक अस्पताल तकरीबन 65 लाख की लागत से बनकर तैयार है लेकिन 6 साल से इसका उद्घाटन नहीं हुआ है इसे खोला नहीं गया है जिसकी वजह से जो आसपास के इलाके में रहने वाले लोग हैं उनको दर-दर भटकना पड़ता है शहर की ओर जाना पड़ता है पूर्णिया जाना पड़ता है मधेपुरा जाना पड़ता है इलाज कराने के लिए 6 years ago this building was constructed at a cost of 65 lakh rupees. But now, the Nitish Kumar government has probably forgotten this exists. This hospital does not even exist on papers. काहे कि ये हॉस्पिटल जो है अतिरिक्त प्राथमिक स्वास्थ्य केंद्र है इसको जो है यहां पर नहीं डॉक्टर आता है नहीं कोई जो यहां के प्रतिनिधि सब है यानी कि विधायक हुए एमपी हुए किसी सब इसको इग्नोर करके चले जाते हैं इसीलिए ये गांव का जो है ना सभी आदमी को काफी कष्ट उठाना पड़ता है विलेजर्स अलेज दे आर पेइंग द प्राइस फॉर देयर पॉलिटिकल लॉयल्टीज यहां की जनता और मुखिया दोनों राजद के समर्थक हैं यहां विरोधी दल के एमपी हैं विरोधी दल के विधायक हैं उच्च वर्ग से आते हैं विधायक और क्या कहते हैं यहां यह पंचायत जो पूर्णता पिछड़ी जाति के लोग यहां हैं ये यही समावेश में आकर के इसका उद्घाटन एमपी कर रहे हैं अन्नो कर रहे हैं विधायक if the building was finished, if the government had hired doctors and healthcare staff, if there were medicines and facilities, this cow shed would have been playing a major role in Purnia's war against the virus. If only. With Rohit Singh in Purnia, Bureau Report, India Today. Enforcement Directorate has raided 13 premises of Namneet Kalra. The ED conducted a search on the multiple properties of Kalra and his close aide Gagan Dukka. The duo had imported over 7,000 concentrators from China at the price of 15,000 rupees per unit and sold them at a skyrocketing price of 70,000 rupees per unit. During the searches, <coughs> ED found more than 150 foreign brand liquor bottles at Kalra's house, some incriminating documents and digital devices have also been seized. ED officials have searched the bank lockers owned by Namit Kalra. Meanwhile, forensic examination revealed the poor quality of the oxygen concentrators. Kalra is accused of hoarding and black marketing of oxygen concentrators. Navneet Kalra is also charged with sale of medical items without having a proper license. Kalra and his close aides took advantage of the raging pandemic and made a huge profit by cheating the public.